Hello. Happy Saturday. I definitely know it's the weekend, so I feel like saying happy Saturday is a safe bet. Um, welcome. Um, I just feel like there's not much that I can do um, from my home um, other than kind of share messages. So this is why you're probably going to get an influx of videos over the next little bit here. I mean, I think we're all kind of feeling like that, a little helpless, a little lost. Um, if we're not an essential worker or frontline worker, there's not a lot we can do other than taking care of ourselves and staying home. But in saying that, um, I think one thing I can contribute or maybe kind of help is to kind of share some of the things that have been helping for me. And so I don't want this to, to seem insensitive in any way because um, it's not, it's just the reality, I guess. Most of our world spends so much time worrying and stressing and then worrying some more. Um, and if we all really, I think, understood how much worry and stress affect us, not just our physical health, uh, our mental health, but like energetically too. The only thing we're responsible for in this world is our energy. And if we all did better to take care of the energy that we're putting out and like the worry and the anxiety, um, we would probably as a collective feel a little bit calmer. And I think that's one of the big lessons, right? And I spoke about that before, the fact that we are like this ocean of energy and we're all interconnected. What is happening on a global scale, um, people are feeling um, individually in their home in a way that they never felt before. Now, the thing is, it's one thing to say like, don't worry, relax, you know? But I, I think it's a really good opportunity for us to learn to surrender. We have no control over this, no control. It is just something just like the ocean waves, just like the wind, just like a tornado, just like an earthquake. There is no way we can stop it at this point. There's no way we can exert any control over then taking care of ourselves, showing up, obviously in terms of like the medical system and things like that. But really for those of you that are at home feeling lost or feeling anxious or feeling helpless or feeling hopeless and you know, that amount of mental weight and worry and anxiety and concern is, is weighing on you, you just have to do your best and maybe this will be the lesson for a lot of us because it's a good opportunity is is to accept there is nothing we can do and i think you know the universe and spirit give us a lot of opportunities to do exactly that a lot of things show up on our path that we can't control that we can't accept that we can't change you know really in the grand scheme of things we were the architect at one point and we did create all of this um but there's not so much that we can control you know like the saying they even said it on Grey's Anatomy the other day my grandma used to say this to me all the time you know we plan and God laughs there is a not a lot that is within our control other than ourselves. We can control the level of emotion. We can control the level of anxiety. We control the amount of worrying in the form of mental boundaries, in the form of creating foundational beliefs in terms of exactly what I said, everything's going to happen regardless of whether we worry or stress or not. You know, the outcome is unraveling as we speak. It could be argued that from a government level, um, this could have been prevented or the extreme that, you know, to the, the extreme spectrum that this will get, it could have been prevented for sure. That's not what I'm saying, but I'm saying everything is already unraveling. And so if that is true, then we have no control over it. And so, um, it's just a waste of your energy that could be put into other things right now, into yourself, into your family, um, into your home and you know I mean I feel bad because it's easier said than done and, and I want to understand that but at what point do we learn to worry less 
At what point does that lessen? You know, we hear it all of our lives or we hear it from people. You know, if only I knew like to relax and to worry less. I mean, really everyone that I'm talking to right now is probably like, all right, Kayla, like ideally, of course, like we all want to be more peaceful. We all want to not feel the anxiety. We want to all, you know, have a relaxed nervous system for sure. That is the goal. And I totally respect that, especially as someone who has struggled with PTSD and who has struggled with trauma and the nervous system and all the things that go with it. I totally get it. But let me challenge you on this. Worrying is pointless. I mean, ultimately, we've convinced ourselves that we have no control. We disempower ourselves all the time by believing um, the brain. So on one hand, it's super important to understand the neck up and the brain and the role that plays. And I say this a million times, this is not a reliable source of information. This is not our heart. This is not the truth. Our brain is just made up of thoughts and our thoughts actually don't exist because it's just energy. So I will challenge you all over the next little bit here to play with the idea of worry and maybe being curious about whether or not you actually can choose whether you worry or not. I'll give you a good example. Like right now, and I mean, I've been practicing this for a while, so this example might not be healthy, like helpful. I mean, I could go into the whole explanation that my daughter's severely asthmatic. She was already in the hospital a month ago. Like if she gets a little bit of a cold, what's a cold for you or me is like right into her chest and she will throw up because she can't breathe. So like, that's my reality, okay. You know, there, one of the local stores was, uh, has been shut down because they have been contaminated with COVID-19. My husband and I have both been there during that outbreak. So that, you know, sunk in. There's just all these levels and layers. And there are so many people that my husband and I love and care about um, that are immune compromised or aren't the healthiest. And that is really scary. But I can't, nor can he, spend our life worrying about this. It is out of our control. This is what I have learned. If I need to worry, I will know. If I get a phone call and something has happened, I will jump into action. I will sort it out. I will deal with those emotions. I will help where I can. I will do what I can. But it is a useless job for me to allow myself, to allow my energy that I'm now putting out into the world, to allow my brain to overreact and go into those places. And it's unnecessary for me to allow it to transform into my physical body, which then will create the anxiety, right? Starts as the worry, then it goes in because we feel it, right? Everything starts as the thought and then we feel. Or the external stimulus and then we feel. And I could lose sleep. I could be bubbling my daughter, not even letting her touch look at anybody while we're walking like we're not obviously but i could be to the crazy extreme and i could literally not even function at this point um with the amount of worry which is rightful i mean if there has ever been a time in the planet to like really really worry it's probably now um but what i will tell you all is worry stole my life you know the amount of stress that I created or that outside circumstances, you know, kind of allowed me to create and then I continue creating myself because I too lived in this notion that I couldn't control it. You know, who can control their thoughts? Who can control how they feel? You know, anxiety was just a part of me. I didn't know any different, um, but you know what? It stole way too many years of my life. And that would be a whole other video, a whole other story. And so, yeah, I, I mean, it's easy for me because I'm sitting here in front of you and I'm someone who's been actively working on, you know, wanting to take their life back and empowering themselves in a way of not worrying for so many years. And I get that. Um, but it's only been the last few years where I've really implemented it. You know, I used to be someone who would lie awake at night staring at the ceiling or in my mind's eye thinking of my list of all the people and things. You know, I didn't hear from my brother today. I should probably call him tomorrow oh my God, what if something happened? And then I allow my brain to spiral, right? Or a conflict with somebody. And I could just allow it, the conversations to happen in my head or replaying things and then eventually would feel anxious. And the next thing you know, it's two hours that have gone by and I'm laying in my bed and now I'm riddled with anxiety. I can't really breathe. I'm uncomfortable and I'm frustrated because now it's one o'clock in the morning and I'm not sleeping and I know I'm grouchy when I don't get sleep and that's not helpful. And 
so on and so on. Even when my daughter moved home, I used to sleep with um, monitor watching. She was very immune compromised and she was very ill all the time and, and it was right to, to worry, but it, it got to a point where I couldn't sleep because I, I was attached to it. Um, you know, and then many other years of anxiety and worry and all of that kind of stuff. But what I have learned is I do have a choice. And the biggest kind of thing I can say to you guys is be selfish. I had to learn to be selfish. And it and a lot of people hear that and they're like, you know, but I had to learn to, as, as horrible as this is, not give a shit about anybody or anything else other than myself. And so I call to you, if you are someone right now whose anxiety is through the roof and you're feeling like it's getting to the point that it's unmanageable or the amount of mental weight and worry and concern is showing up and it is unmanageable right now. And on top of that, you have all these barriers of not really being able to access people in a social way, not being able to leave the home, all that kind of stuff. If this is unmanageable, you need to show up for yourself and not give a shit about anybody or anything else. Because the reality is you can't do anything for anybody else at this point. What is going to happen will happen. The thing is, it's going to happen whether you worry and stress yourself to the nuts or it's going to happen whether you are peaceful. It doesn't matter. But the thing is, you have to decide what path you want to choose. Do you want to choose the path of, path of least resistance or do you want to create inner turmoil for yourself? Because maybe other people won't tell you, but I will tell you, it is all man-made. It is all you made. You know, we create our own reality and yeah, for sure, um, there are skills that you can do in terms of mental boundaries. Don't allow yourself. Make a choice and say, it is unhelpful for me at this point to worry about my grandparents on the other side of the country. It is unhelpful for me to worry about my cousin who is sick and, and living here. It is unhealthy for me. I have to show up for me and choose me because my kids need me or my partner needs me. I need me and so this is a really good opportunity for us to learn this um, because you know when the world does go back to normal whatever that looks like there are still going to be things that show up and disrupt the absolute shit out of your life and they're going to happen whether you anticipate them whether you've created them or whether you've you know worried that they would never have things will always show up and there are always going to be opportunities and lessons um for you to learn and grow and and the reality is is when we don't learn they just show up again just with a different face with a different scenario in a different environment so really it is now really about looking at your download of beliefs around worry and stress and anxiety um, and really kind of trying to reconfigure or even simply being curious at this point around how you can do something a bit different. You know, where in your spectrum of worrying or your inner mental list at night, where can you take one or two things off because you've realized and created this foundational belief that I can't do shit anyway. So I'm wasting my energy. I'm wasting my, 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 heart health, I'm wasting my mental health, all the energy that I can, that can be, and this is my next point, charged into something different, I am allowing myself. By letting myself go down the rabbit hole, by letting myself put this energy and giving myself permission to worry instead of hoping. Now, this is kind of the other thing. When we feel really helpless and when we feel hopeless and when we're in situations like this, although this is unprecedented, but anyways, when we are at this place, the only thing we can is fucking hope and we pray and we have faith and we believe because what's the consequence of that at this point? Nothing. Make the choice. Be more hopeful. Be more calm where you can take deep breaths because again, it's out of your control surrender to it. What will be, will be. Now, when those moments of anxiety, when those moments of 
anger, when those moments of curiosity, when those moments of overwhelm show up, you slow the hell down and you calm and you breathe and you put your hand on your heart you take a deep breath and you just wrap whoever you are thinking about whatever you are thinking about in love and white light and gold and pink or however and if you are so worried about someone that is living somewhere else or worried about them for their health or you can't access them or they're even in your own home it is doing them no good and I will tell you from an energetic perspective, you are not showing up for those people. You are not showing up for yourself. One, you are participating by in the worry and the stress of the world by energetically just sending that back out there. And the person who is receiving that is just receiving more worry, more stress. They don't know that obviously, but it's an energetic thing, right? If we're all feeling this, it's because everyone's feeling that. So if you cut the population in half and you let everyone or you encourage everyone or help everyone or believe that everyone can feel hope and love and faith instead, then eventually we'll start to shift into that and that we'll have more bouts of the day of more feeling kind of hopeful. Because at this point, what do we have to lose? We don't lose anything by being hopeful. We don't lose anything by being calm. We don't lose anything by being selfish at this point. Nope. But if we allow ourselves and give ourselves permission to continually stress, to continually worry about things we cannot control, if we give ourselves permission to do that, there are consequences. One, the biggest opportunity in the world to surrender and you're not doing that, those lessons will con continue. Two, your health Google, no, maybe not, don't Google. There are so many studies, most disease, most illness, heart disease, everything, most can all be linked back to stress. And in one of the biggest crises, crises of our century, um, you can best believe that stress is impacting your health, whether it's your thyroid, your heart, your nervous system, anything, that eventually leads to adrenal fatigue, which doesn't, it just, all of these things, that happens, from allowing the worry to happen, from allowing the mental weight to occur. If we don't nip it in the bud, if we don't stomp our feet, if we don't say, that's enough, Kayla. You've allowed, you've let yourself worry, you've gone down the rabbit hole, now you need to show up and now you need to smarten up and now you need to do something different because you cannot fix anything and you cannot control everything. So close it down and then you do. You do have that control. The difference between people who can manage their anxiety or manage their worry and manage their stress and the people who can't is just they believe that they can and they believe that they can't. No, I will not, I will, as a, an aside or a disclosure, obviously there are, you know, people in this world who have clinical diet anxiety and need to be medicated for that, whether, you know, it's a chemical imbalance in their brain or, or so on and so on or severe trauma and all of that. I am not speaking to that. Um, as someone who has been on antidepressants at one point in their life, I do understand, you know, the severity of the mental health and in terms of depression and anxiety. And I'm not, it's not what I'm saying. This is more of a bit of a tough love speech for, you know, all the people out there who are just being consumed by media, being consumed by, you know, the unknown. Our whole life is unknown, guys. From the moment we are born, do you think anything other than what we've kind of planned? Like how many times do you look back in your life and be like, well, like I really didn't think it was gonna go that way, but it did. You know, everything always turns out okay. And we are born with an unknown, unknowing. Uh, we have no idea what's going to unfold. We don't know where our life is going to go or who we're going to marry or what our kids are going to look like, but we show up and we do it anyway. We proceed. We have faith. We move forward with hope because, again, there is no consequence of not being hopeful. Does that make sense? Really, if there was a live, you might be able to say yes or no. But So, biggest opportunity that you will have in your life regardless of what age you are. And I tell you this with love, you cannot do anything about what is going on. You can help people, put a table outside your house, write a free sign and put some canned goods out if you can. If you know somebody and it is safe for you to do so, that it, you know someone that is in need of food um, or somebody who lives in, in a retirement home or something like that and it is okay for you to do so and like feasible and health safe, 
make something, go drop it off on their porch. You know, if you can donate, if you can help, if you can do, for sure do all of those things. But what I am not, what I am referring to simply is when you're sitting at home eating dinner or having breakfast and the stress and the worry come, make the choice. Find your strength. What an amazing opportunity for everyone in the world to reach in and find out who they can really be. Ask yourself, who do you wanna be? Do you wanna be somebody who allows the worry and the mental weight to just take over? Or do you wanna be someone who has some control and who can say, brain, shut this down. I know that you are not accurate. I know that you are not true. I know you are not my heart and I know that you don't exist. I have control. My truth has control. And I wanna be somebody who spreads love, who spreads hope into the world energetically through my thoughts. That's who I wanna be. This is a really good time to unpack what you're made of, guys. And I really think if you give yourself this opportunity and do this work right now and show up for yourself in this way and really push yourself to your limits to see what you're really made of in terms of releasing unnecessary worrying and unnecessary stress, if you can do this, I guarantee when life goes back to normal in many months from now, you will see a huge difference. You will realize that you are a badass and that if there's anything that you wanna bring into your life, whether it's more peace or more calm or whatever, that it starts, that you can do it, but it starts with you being selfish. You know. Going back to what I had said, I feel like I'm all over the map, but when my life was like that, when I couldn't sleep, when I couldn't really function, because the worry or whatever, I lost a lot of people and I lost a lot of things in a period of, well, my life, but in a, a chunk of period of time, I spent a lot of time needlessly, incessantly worrying um, about everyone who was gonna die. I would create plans in my head of like how I would handle it, what I would do. It was just chaotic. And the biggest learning piece was for me is I was feeding into it. It's like a blank canvas, it's blank. You splash some black on it, you're like, ooh. You write a word on it, fear, loss. And then you're like, oh wow. And then you can see it and then it's real. And then you just, it's like, then every other thought that you have, it just now shows up on that canvas. And then it just shows up and more and more. And then you're looking at it and you're so consumed by all of the words in the canvas that was once blank, you know, which represents the blank energy of your brain at one point. And you just feed and you create and you create and you create until you can't breathe because it starts as a thought and then eventually you feel it all because now you're creating this story, but it is linked to something in you. It is linked to sadness or pain or whatever. And now that you're feeling in your stomach, you're feeling in your heart and then you can't breathe. It's a beautiful example of anxiety. Now, you have a choice. You can keep that blank canvas blank. It's mental boundaries. It's, it's, it's again, goes back to foundational beliefs. What do you believe in in a time like this? What suits you? And if it's not calm and if it's not peaceful and it doesn't come from love and if it's not, you know, you showing up for you, you need a new goddamn belief. You need a new foundational system at this point. Um, something that is hopeful, something that is of love, that is of the light. You need to... You need to do that for yourself at this point. You just have to, there's really no other choice, okay? So, I hope that it wasn't really hard. Oh, my neck, it's all red. I only, it only happens when I'm channeling information or when I'm whatever, I'm not anxious or nervous or anything, it's just energy really. Um, it's usually in my throat chakra because I'm speaking. Weird, not sure why I'm sharing it, but I just saw it. Um, okay, so. The reason, the other reason I shared that with you is because my guides asked me to. Um, I was having a shower again and they're like, come on, you gotta do this. This is your contribution, this is your part. And aside from that, I've had a lot of amazing people reach out to me and just say like, it's a lot. And listen, I don't ever wanna minimize that this shit is not a lot and that is not crazy and that it is not overwhelming and it is not all of the things for sure. But again, even in saying the list of things that it is, I'm creating and I'm painting that canvas and eventually I could starting to feel it already. I can feel it in my stomach. I can go there. We can all go there. We can allow ourselves and just be like, sure, why not? Might as well just jump in the water of like, frustration, jump in the water of crazy, jump in the water of worry. Totally, it is always a choice. 
So stop believing that you have no control over your thoughts. Stop believing you have no control over your emotions. Stop believing you have no control at all. You do. You have lots. Start practicing it. Explore it. Create it. Notice when the thoughts are coming up like a thought bubble and just be curious about it and aware and be like, oh, wow, that the best advice I've ever was given, sometimes stop. If you're just like doing dishes and stuff and this crazy thought about something that's not really attached to you comes up, stop and be like, wow, that's something that's like very obviously prevalent in the world because we collectively will attract thoughts that are within our community. Sometimes I'll be driving and, and I'll ha look at somebody and I'll have a, uh, this sounds terrible, I'll have a thought about this person and usually it could be prejudice, it could be racist, it could be whatever, and I'm none of those things. And I'll be like, whoa. And it was just an energetic thing that came within my field and I just heard it almost. And it's not actually a thought. And I was like, wow. And I take that as a moment to put my hand on my heart because I can feel that either in this community or people around me are putting that out there. And because I'm open, I can hear and feel and see all of that, you know? Um, and that makes me sad. It does, it makes me really sad. And because it's just an awareness of, wow, this is still in the world. But that's how we heal collectively, is when we pay attention to that. So when you are doing your dishes and this crazy worry of what's going on or this like impending doom comes in and you weren't really connecting to that or thinking about that, stop and be like, wow. Obviously, a lot of people around me in my community, everybody needs a lot of love because that's a really strong thought and it has to go through a lot of people in order to get to kind of me. Um, so I'm just gonna send everybody love and peace and calm that's a little bit you can control those are the little things that you can do um but please for the love of god if you guys are stuck in your head if this is going crazy please it is not a reliable source this is not truth this is the absolute opposite of truth get grounded get outside today i was out literally rolling around i was debating but i was rolling around in the dirt get your hands in the dirt if you can unless you're around snow still or feet get out into the sunshine get grounded hold a crystal have a shower have a bath get back in your body and feel into your heart and know you have a choice do not listen to this. Do not feed into it. I feel like I'm on repeating myself. Anyways, I'm sending you guys all lots of love. If you have any questions, please pop them down in the video and I will answer them. I'll probably go live in a few days to answer some of your questions. Um, and as I slowly get the group together, I'll probably do eventually some more lives in there where I can actually ask maybe or answer some psychic questions um, that will probably be coming up over the next little bit. Anyway, sending you all love. Um, I hope wherever you are in the world, whatever time it is, you are enjoying yourself. You're showing up for yourself. Be selfish. Oh, that was the thing. One more thing. When I keep saying be selfish, this is what I mean. And they keep pulling me back to that. When I would worry about all of those things, I would have to be like, I, I would have to stop my brain and just say to myself, my daughter is sleeping. I can see it on the monitor. She's sleeping. Okay. My husband is sleeping. Everyone that I know and I love are sleeping. I can't worry about them. I have to be more important than them right now. I have to be for my own sake, because if I don't calm my shit down, if I don't pull myself together, if I don't get a grip on reality, if I don't relax, I will not sleep. And then other people have a bad day because I'm miserable and that is not helpful for my husband and that is not helpful for my daughter. And the people that I'm worrying about is not helpful. They don't know I'm laying in bed at one o'clock in the morning worrying about them. And two, the biggest other thing is, you will never be, no matter how much you worry about somebody you love and care about, no matter how much you stress about them, you will never, ever, 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 ever be the one to help them. And I know that's hard, you know, um, and it's a tough lesson for a lot of people, especially with family, because we think like, oh, we're blood, we're also connected. Like I have to, it's my responsibility. It is not your responsibility. You do what you can and that is it. But if the worry is interrupting your sleep and if it is interrupting your day-to-day -day function and it becomes unmanageable, you do have to check into that part of being selfish and you do have to step up that game because you are not really helping them. And we really never help the people we love. Everyone is on their own very beautiful, unique individual journey and they're gonna go through what they're gonna go through whether you worry about it or not. So in return, send love, send support, send whatever, check in on them, be peaceful, but detach from that if it's too much, okay? Anyways, love you guys.